Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm here with a problem from Yang and Friedman's University Physics textbook. I started answering questions from a new text uh, from a new chapter. Sorry, we're done with chapter two. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or send me an email. But I've started choosing questions from uh, chapter three to solve. So here I have with me problem 3.57. Let's get started. A grasshopper leaps into the air from the edge of a vertical cliff as shown in figure P3.57, find A, the initial speed of the grasshopper and B, the height of the cliff. So usually I start, like to start off with a diagram to explain um, the question and draw out the problem. But this question is a little bit different in that we are actually not really given any information in the question and all the information is given in the diagram. So that's why I included the diagram right over here. Um, Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm included the diagram right over here. And we can actually look at this and get all the information that we need from it. So I'll start by, since we don't have any values in this question, I'll start by explaining some of the numbers that we have in the diagram and how this problem works. So this grasshopper is jumping and we can see that it's jumping in this um, projectile motion pattern, right? And so how projectile motion typically works is that there's, if we have in an X and a Y component, um, if we have an X, sorry, X and a Y component, what happens is that we have acceleration in one of these axes or one of these axes. And that is usually, I wanna say like greater than 99 percent of the time this y-axis and then this x component is usually just um constant speed and that is that pretty much sums up what how projectile motion works because what happens is that um whenever we have some sort of arc pattern whenever something is going towards this yeah is moving in some sort of arc pattern it's that in the y component we have some acceleration, which is typically gravity working on it. And then in the X, it's just constant speed because there's no acceleration in this um, direction. So it's just going to move um, how it typically, how a constant speed would move, how something that had constant, sorry, something that has constant speed would move. And so the same actually applies to this problem right over here. So sorry, I'm just gonna write down um, X and Y. And so we see that there's gonna be some sort of grasshopper right over here. It's going to jump, it's going to jump in this projectile motion and it's going to reach a maximum height of 6.74 centimeters. And it's going to move this um, horizontal distance of 1.06 meters. And this angle right over here, I'm just gonna call it theta um, and that's equal to 50 degrees. And that's going to be useful for um, some part in the question later. But now that we have um, an overall understanding of this diagram, what we can do is we can start by looking at problem or part A and looking at all the values that we want and all the values that we have and how we can approach this problem. So looking at A, what we want is the initial speed of the grasshopper. So we want what B not is. So we don't know what V not is and we want that. What we do have and we can use is speed in the y direction, right? Because the y direction is going to give us enough information about really the, it's going to give us enough information to get the initial speed. And that works because if we look at this projectile problem in two different components. So if we look at it purely from the Y perspective, what we have is some grasshopper, some object goes up, it reaches some maximum height and then it goes down. And that's really just like one dimensional motion, right? And then it does kind of the same in the X direction. In the X, it also just goes at some constant speed, right? And that's also one dimension. And that's really kind of the root of how to solve every two dimensional problem. And that's just by breaking it down into its components and solving the components. And if you've watched some of my past videos, we've already done this multiple times. So we're just gonna apply um, the ideas and skills and um, problem solving that we did in 
prior problems to break this question down and solve it from that perspective. So looking at purely the y, what we have is acceleration, like we said, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we have a height, right? We have a distance of 6.74 centimeters or 0 0.0674 meters. And we also have one, another interesting thing we can actually use is we can just, um, because we're only looking for initial speed, we can just break this problem down at any point, right? And get and extract information out of it, right? So we don't have any third or fourth or fifth piece of information because we don't know how long this took we have. We don't know what time is. We don't know what VF is. And we don't really know what V naught is because that's what we're trying to find out. But we can break this question down to realize that we can find our own VF, right? We can't really, um, yeah, we can find what, uh, we can find, we can choose any VF. And so why not look at this Y component and recognize that when we throw an object into the air, then it's going to slow down because gravity is working against it. And it's going to reach some V is equal to zero, like we did in previous problems. So why don't we look at this question right over here and recognize that at this at this tip, it's going to be V naught is equal to zero meters per second. And we can break the question down right over here because acceleration is going to be the same there. The distance, that is the max height is where it goes at zero meters per second. And then we can just solve for V naught. So we know that we said at the maximum height, which is 0 0.0674 meters, our V naught Oops, sorry, I'm just gonna change the color. Our, sorry, our VF, our VF is going to be equal to zero meters per second. And now we can just use one of our kinematic equations to solve for what VI is going to be. So if we use this equation, VI squared um, is equal to V, or sorry, v, VF squared is equal to B F squared is equal to B I squared plus two A D. And we can plug in our values. So we have zero is equal to V I squared or V naught squared plus two um, times um, minus 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.07674. And if we solve for V I, um, what I'm getting is 1.149 meters per second. That's what I'm getting for VI. And sorry, that I should specify that that is VI, Y, right? Because we said that all of this is in the Y component. So if actually I want to be even more specific, that's just going to be VI, Y and VF, Y. But that's not actually the whole story, right? That's not actually just the initial speed. That's only the initial speed in the Y direction because we, we just broke it down into components. And so now we have to find what VIX is because if we have VI, we have VIY, we want what VI is. So if this is VIY and this is VIX, then VI is actually going to be um, a value that um, both these components make up or a better way to say it is that the initial speed is made up of both a VIY and VIX component. And so that kind of brings us back to this um, equation, or sorry, this angle theta right over here, in which we can see that if this is 50 degrees and we have VIY, then we can just use trig to figure out what v, uh, VI is, right? So we know that V I Y is equal to V I sine theta. And that then we can solve for V I. So we get V I is equal to V I Y over sine theta is equal to, um, I'm getting V I, oh, sorry, I'm going to plug in my numbers. So 1.149 
divided by sine of 50. And the VI value that I'm getting is 1.4999 meters per second or 1.50 meters per second. And so our in our first part of the question, our final answer, oh, sorry, I should make that a little bit bigger. In the first part of our question, our final answer for the initial speed of the grasshopper is 1.50 meters per second. So I'm just going to write that down on uh, the, maybe over here I can, can write that down. So V naught is equal to 1.5 meters per second. And now what I'm just gonna do is I'm going to erase um, part A, or I'll just erase starting from here and then we can solve for part B. And for part B, we are trying to solve for the height of the cliff. So we know that um, 6.74 is how high the grasshopper jump, but really like what is this distance? And that's what we're searching for. So what is this H? What is the height of this cliff? Okay, so now what we can do is we can use our, um, we can use our uh, V naught value or our initial speed. We can get the X component from it because we're already given this, um, this distance that it travels horizontally, we can find the time from that, right? And then using the time, we can plug that back into the Y component and we can solve for what the height will be at that Y component. So that's, um, might sound a little bit abstract, but let's get started. So we know that we can use our X to find the time at this point. So our X is going to be, if we look back at our V naught, we just wanna get the V naught X component and that's gonna be V naught and then cos 50. And when I do that, I am getting, um, oh, actually, sorry, we're solving for that, we're solving for that. So when I write this out, I'm, oh yeah, sorry, we're getting V naught X and V naught is 1.5 meters per second, cos 50 and V naught X is equal to, I'm just gonna plug that into my calculator really quickly. And I'm getting 0 0.96. Just having extra decimal places here so that my answer is just as accurate as possible for um, when I carry these digits on. I don't want to make a rounding mistake and then my answer is more inaccurate later on. Okay, so we I have my B naught X here. And what we know is that this is simply just um, in one dimension, there is no acceleration. So it's just going to be distance is equal to V naught X times T. And that is going to be 0 0.96418 times the time, which we don't know. But this distance we have right over here, and that's 1.06. That's time. And the T value that I get here is 1.099. And I'm just going to double check that. So 1.06 divided by 0.96418. Yep, that's the value that I'm getting. Okay, so now we know that at when the grasshopper lands on the floor, it's going to be at, it's it's gonna take, um, it's gonna happen at T is equal to 1.099 seconds, which means that can't we use this Y component, right? Can't we use um, one of the kinematic equations and find what, 
vertical distance is going to be at that point, right? Because we already have our acceleration, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We have our time, which is 1.099 seconds. And we have our, um, sorry, we have one more piece of information. And that is, Sorry, and that is one point, sorry, not one point, that is um, our V naught Y. And that's gonna be 1.149 meters per second, right? So we have these values from our, um, from our Y component, and we can use that and along with this equation, so D is equal to V naught Y T plus half of um, E T squared. We can plug in our values into this. We can plug in the values. And then we can get what this distance is. And so I don't have too much space here, but when I plug this in, what I get is D is equal to negative 4.66 meters. So that means that at this um, point right over here, when the grasshopper um, reaches the floor, that is going to happen at negative 4.66 meters, which means that the height of the cliff is 4.66 meters. And so that might've been a little bit confusing. So I'm just gonna go over it one more time. So the height of the cliff, and I'm just gonna write that down. So the height of the cliff is equal to 4.66 meters. And I'm just going to go over again how we solve this part B, just in case it was a little bit confusing, um, because this is the first um, two-dimensional question that I'm going to be doing. Um, so in this question, in this part of the question, we know what we're trying to get is what the height of the cliff is. And so what we did was we, we know what, or we can find from part A, what the X component is, right? And using the x component of the speed and this um, distance that we know that it travels, we can find the time that it is at the end, at the end of its journey. And at the end of the journey, we also know that it's going to be at the floor. So we can work our way using the, um, the y component to find out what the height of the cliff is. And that's how we wrote down our components or sorry, our value, our known values in the y act, or y direction so that we can plug them into one of the five kinematic equations and we can solve for the distance, which we got was negative 4.66 meters. And that is the solution to our problem. If this question, uh, if you have any questions um, about this problem, please feel free to leave your question in the comments or send me an email because I also include my email in the description. And if you have any questions for the future, any problems for the future, you can also email me those and I'll um, try to solve them on, um, on video. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you, uh, sorry, I already said if you have questions, you can ask me, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe if it, if it was helpful.